Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our online learning orientation. This program is intended for the full-time and part-time faculty of Central Philippine University. So please share the link that we have sent to your companions. You can share it to other colleagues as long as they are faculty of the C Central Philippine University. To prepare for this orientation, may I remind everyone that you can take hold of your pen and paper to take down notes. If you're comfortable, you can also take down notes using your respective computers and gadgets. Your questions shall be posted as comments on the live section below, below this video that you're watching right now. And we will be going over your questions for us to address later during the discussion forum. While we are waiting for some uh, faculty and staff to key in to our live session, please uh, remind other companions and colleagues, kindly share the link of this YouTube video to them. So again, this orientation is intended for all the colleges of Central Philippine University. Full-time and part-time faculty are welcome to join this orientation. If you have any questions, just kindly comment it on the comment section below this video and we will be addressing your questions in the Q&A session later on. So we are streaming live from the Educational Media Center of Central Philippine University. So we would like to extend warm Centralian greetings to all faculty and staff. We know that you miss CPU. CPU tells us that she misses you too. <laughs> so if you want to extend your highs and regards to CPU, you can comment that there on the comment section. Are you all excited for the online learning? Or are you all anxious about this online learning? Okay, that's something that we will be addressing later on. We will not have a perfect recipe as of this time because this is just an orientation. This will be a teaser on our incoming training that I hope you will be get excited on. So for the new viewers, welcome, good morning, and welcome to our online learning orientation. You can share the link to your colleagues, fellow full-time and part-time faculty and staff of the Central Philippine University. Once again, good morning and welcome to the online program orientation. To start our program, may I request Reverend Francis Neil Halandoon for our opening prayer. Pastor. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, and your mercy to all of us. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we can have our faculty orientation this morning with regards to online classes. We ask, Lord, that your presence be in our midst and be also in uh, all our faculty, part-time or full-time in the respective homes. We entrust this uh, orientation to you, O oh God. Uh, we pray for... Uh, good connectivity for all of us, that there will be no, no more technical problems. And we also pray that we will understand what our panelists will be talking to us this morning. We entrust everything to you and we bring back all the glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, good morning to all and welcome to our orientation for online program. I know you have mixed feelings towards this online program. Some of you might be excited, some of you might feel anxious, but we are here to address the concerns that might arise. So to hear an inspirational message, let's welcome our president, Dr. Chudoro C. Robles. Sir. Good morning, everyone. We are living on uncertain times, yet we want to be prepared for whatever will happen. So far, we know that we can offer online education or distance learning. But we don't know when face-to-face -face classroom instruction will begin. So the best thing for us is to learn online delivery of instruction and whatever it takes to make sure that the students learn. So the university has decided that we will start our summer program, July 1, so that those who uh, are in the second year and the rest of the years will be ready for the first semester. And in order to do that, we need to train everybody, 
especially starting with those who will have summer load, what is online education and what they have to prepare to be ready for the start of the summer classes. Then after that, all the other faculty, the rest of the faculty, part-time and full-time, will be trained so that they will be ready for the first semester and so on, because we don't know when we can get back to the classroom. So we hope that uh, all of you would have to be ready, have an open heart so that we can continue the existence of Central Philippine University. And also, by being ready for online education, you will be ready for any eventuality. Our jobs are very important for us, so the only way to do that is to be ready regardless of what will happen to the rest of the world. So there will be training uh, in classrooms with the computer after this orientation and the schedule will be announced. The university has made sure that we will have funds for this faculty development program. You will be provided with your one month salary for the month of June upon completion of the training so that we will know that you're ready for the next step. Then we can start our summer program July 1. But the rest of the faculty will be trained within the month of June so that by the first semester we will be ready for whatever will be the outcome of uh, what happens to uh, the world because of the pandemic. So I hope that you will uh, face the future with open arms, open minds, so that we together can save the existence of the university and also protect all our jobs. So thank you very much and I hope that all of this training will be very beneficial to you. Maybe you don't realize it yet, but you'll find that will, this will make your life um, much easier uh, in your classroom instructions later on or online, whatever it will be. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. I hope that uh, you will be uh, ready uh, for the next step in our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sir Robles. I think they heard the part that this will make our instruction easier. I hope you've captured the message. At this junction, we'll be listening to the rationale of this online program from our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Irving Domingo Rio. Sir. Dr. Tudoro C. Robles, University President, fellow administrators, my colleagues, in the teaching profession, good morning. Let us face reality as it is, not as it was or as you wish it to be. A quote by Jack Welch. Going online is the new normal in delivering education. It is the new reality in the educational landscape. The issue is not whether you are in favor of online instruction or not, or the many disadvantages of online education, but how soon can the faculty from the kindergarten to the tertiary adapt to this new reality. Some philosophers say that reality is a matter of perception, but what we are facing is no longer a matter of perception. Online instruction is now a government policy and will be strictly implemented by the Department of Education 
and the Commission on Higher Education starting next school year. In fact, CHED will only allow the offering of summer classes before September if the universities can deliver their programs on a purely online basis. Do we have a choice? No. Like many faculty, I am not highly skilled in the use of computer, and in this case, I have no choice but to learn online instruction if I still want to teach. Central Philippine University, under the administration of Dr. Teodoro C. Robles, will make sure that all faculty have acquired the needed skills in online instruction before the start of the next school year. We don't want our faculty to lose their jobs. And the only way to keep our jobs and this university alive and stable is for us to learn and hopefully appreciate online education. In closing, let me share another quote by Brian Herbert. It says, the capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. The willingness to learn is a choice. My colleagues, in the teaching profession, fellow administrators, that choice is yours. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Sir Rio. And now we are making our choice. We are making a step. We are taking a step for us to understand online learning and for us to be able to perform online learning. Now, as this event goes on, you are reminded to take down notes. If you have any questions, feel free to comment on the comment section below this video. And we will be addressing your question during the question and answer portion later on. So we will be having our panel of experts which will be discussing online education. Again, if you have questions, just comment on the comment section below this video and we will be addressing it later on. Now, I know you're excited, right? Let's change anxiety to excitement. I know you are excited to know what do CPU mean or what does CPU mean by online learning and what are the things that we need to prepare for our incoming training. These are some of the major questions that will be answered this morning. So our first discussion will be on the presentation of the objectives of this orientation. We are joined by a faculty from the College of Computer Studies. He has been an online instructor by the Tudolf University. He is also a Cisco certified academic instructor. He, had, he was able to handle the following learning management systems, Edu20, Canvas, and Moodle. This may sound foreign to you, but as we go along, you will, you will know what these terms are. So join me as we welcome Professor Antonio Montano Jr. He will give us a lecture on the presentation of the objectives of this orientation. Sir? Good morning, everyone. I am Mr. Antonio Montano Jr. from the College of Computer Studies. Welcome to the technical training orientation for the distance teaching and learning. What are the objectives of this orientation? Number one, we heard a while ago a message from our Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Rio, stating the rationale for the distance and online teaching and learning to familiarize the basics of distance in online teaching and learning, acquire an overview for the preparation of instructional materials, to gain insights on what and how to prepare these online learning materials, and most importantly, to familiarize the best practices and sequencing activities for the distance in online teaching and learning. Lastly, going to familiarize the learning management system that the university will adopt. So what do we expect during the technical training? 
Number one, we know how to use of the recommended learning management system. Upload, revise, and remove online course content and other learning materials. Know how to register or enroll your students in an online class. How to properly conduct and online classes in synchronous mode, and how to administer also a class in offline or a synchronous mode. We would also know how to monitor the learning progress of synchronous and asynchronous students. We know how to create, publish, and give online tests or examinations. Grade students in use the online grade books, how to check, and record student class attendance, and also how to check and record your students' class activities. We would also learn how to interact with our students via the online chat or video or voice conferencing. How to provide student collaboration activities through fora and other social media tools. And lastly, we should know how to conclude and end an online class. So what are the requirements in order for us to use the online le learning management system? We need the course content. And these are basic course components for online teaching and learning. Number one, we should create or devise a study guide or course outline. Second, we would also duplicate the physical environment textbook into an online equivalent, which is the self-directed modular learning content. For each modular content we created, we accompany that content with its own and specific content presentations or slides. It is also highly recommended if we have asynchronous or synchronous students to create our lecture videos, voiceover on video presentations. It is also recommended we create our student activity manuals or student laboratory manuals. We should publish, pre-test, and post-test, create test banks for our learning assessments in examinations, and lastly, we should also create a course feedback and evaluation. And an important reminder, course contents will be uploaded completely to the learning management system prior to the start of the online class. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Montano. Again, if you have questions, you can comment it on the comment section below this video. Now, I know you have a lot of questions running in your mind. How we'll be going to do this, those things. We will have a lecture from on what to prepare prior to online learning. We have Professor Peter Pedro Cambronero. He is also a faculty of the College of Computer Studies with a Master's of Science in Computer Sciences, also a Cisco certified academic instructor. And his thesis has focused on learning management system development. Fellow colleagues, join me as we welcome Professor Peter Pedro Cambronero. Sir. Good morning, everyone. I am Professor Peter Cambronero from the College of Computer Studies. I will give you some insights about the electronic device requirements that will be needed in conducting distance education. In distance learning, there are things to be considered aside from preparing the course content. Teachers must also consider hardware requirements in delivering the course online. There are different devices that can be used to access the internet. So number one, laptop and desktop computers, which are being used in our offices. Second, there are smartphones and tablets in which we use this for sending and receiving emails, text, social, me social media applications, and browsing the internet. But among those devices mentioned, laptop and desktop com computers is a much better choice over mobile devices for the reason that it has 
a much bigger display screen, bigger storage capacity for saving files, compatibility with, ex with external devices like webcam, printers, external hard drives, and etc. A bigger keyboard for typing, and last, the availability of task-oriented application like word processing, Excel, and PowerPoint. Another important thing to consider in delivering course online is a stable internet connection. A stable connection means you can check email without delay, you can open website faster, you can download and upload files faster, stream movies or music, and even have conference calls online without any problems. This is essential when delivering the course online smoothly. What if your learners complain of weak internet connectivity issues? How to handle this kind of situation? So first, reassure them that you understand their situation. Second, offer them assignments and course completion deadline flexibility. This strategy will prevent and any discouragement from your learners. Your learners are more likely to complete the course due to your empathy. A laptop or a computer with an extra computer monitor is recommended. What does it mean? It means that you have to add an extra monitor to your laptop or desktop computer to extend your display. What are the advantages of having a multiple screen? So first, it increases productivity in which you can easily finish your work on time. Second, you can open multiple programs simultaneously. Third, sharing of data between applications can be easier. And the last, for easier comparison of data and figures with your documents. What if the instructors wants to have a live discussions with, their, with the students? An instructor must have a web camera on his or her device and a collaborative software like Zoom or WebEx will be used to conduct live conferencing. Aside from web conferencing, web camera can be used also to create a pre-recorded video discussions being done in PowerPoint. A headset equipped with microphone can be used for video conferencing and audio recording. And lastly, an option of a pair of external computer speakers. If the user wants to output a high quality and loud sound, then an, an external speaker will do. We should be confident enough of shifting ourselves from face-to-face -to, -face to online classroom setting because we are already equipped with tools necessary for conducting distance learning. That's all. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Sir Peter, for that uh, lecture on preparation before online learning. Now, we will be hearing a discussion on preparation and organizing of online instructional materials. We will be hearing it from a faculty, College of Business and Accountancy, who holds a Master's in Business Administration, his experience in online learning has been learning a course through Coursera. He has also been trained on the use of learning management system, Moodle. Let's welcome Thank Professor you, Jonathan for Razon. That, uh, lecture on or online learning. Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Jonathan Razon from the College of Business and Accountancy. So today, I'm going to present to you uh, on how to prepare your online instructional materials. Help you organize it in such a way that will provide easy access for you once you uh, are going to upload it into the learning management system or LMS. Some of you may already have your own way to organize your instructional materials, but for those of you who don't, I hope that this presentation will help you and make your lives easier in uh, transitioning to the online learning management system. So I'll be sharing my screen for most of this presentation to give you a brief but very uh, hopefully helpful walkthrough as we move towards the uh, course design. All right, so I'll be sharing my screen. 
So as you can see, uh, a lot of these things were, a lot of these uh, instructional materials were discussed earlier by Professor Montano, particularly the study guide or the course outline, the modules, the content presentations, the assessments, if you have lecture videos, and of course, uh, other materials. So basically, this is everything we need for the course of a semester. Now, what I'm about to show you first is the study guide. So the study guide will basically uh, provide students with an outline for the entire semester of the online course. So you might be asking, where, where will the study guide come from? Right? So the answer is simple. The study guide will come from your syllabus. Now, if you've prepared uh, your syllabus for, if you have a subject that you've finished preparing the syllabus for, you can use that you know, as a practice to prepare your study guide. So I'll show you what that looks like. All right. So as you can see on the screen, this is the second page of a course syllabus. This course is called BME 1201. It's one of the courses I teach in the College of Business and Accountancy. So um, you're going to take the course code, the course title, and a course description right here to get things started. All right, so as we move towards this, you'll see your course outcomes right there. And of course, the meat of the course itself, the modules. Now for some of you, um, module one right here might be called chapter one or unit one. But for now, we'll stick with module one. And then the title here, and of course, the course contents. We're also going to utilize the assessment task that we're gonna use per module, right? Okay, so basically this is what your syllabus would look like. Notice that I removed weeks and of course uh, some, some other contents here, but for now we'll focus on making this as simple as possible, right? So now I'm going to show you what a study guide looks like. All right, so this is what a study guide looks like. Very similar to what your syllabus would look like, right? So if you remember earlier, I show you a course description, right? So what you can do is, you can enter the course name here in the middle, right? So my course was VME 1201 Marketing Management, right? You can uh, make that all caps if you want. Okay. So that's the course. And then your course description is right here. So all you have to do is simply copy the course description, right? Copy the course description from the syllabus earlier that you had, right? So if you can look at the screen, this, all you have to do is highlight everything, copy. And paste it here on the study guide. That will be your course description, right? If you have an existing grading criteria, you can place it here. And of course, references, which can be, uh, which can be found at the end uh, of your OBE syllabus, you can also paste it right here. Again, that's for uh, this study guide is going to be for your students, right? So that it's going to be easier for them to navigate through the course. Okay. All right. So moving down. All right. So a study guide is actually a condensed version of the syllabus. So it's much more simpler. So what you'll notice here in the study guide, I have three sections. All right. So you have the course content the live class schedule, and of course, the outputs and deadlines associated with each module, right? So let's, now I like to start my classes with an orientation, right? So you can put an orientation here. You can start with an orientation. You can uh, give students an overview of the course, what to expect. You can uh, give them the study guide once it's finished. You can discuss with them the rubrics and other outputs related, right? And you can write a schedule right here. So. Once, you've, once the schedule has been finalized, you can actually set a schedule for your first live class meeting. So for example, let's say this is July 1, 2020, and let's say our schedule is 9 to 10.30 a.m., right? So that's just a, an example, right? So there's no outputs, there's no deadlines unless you have a specific output for orientation. You can put, simply just put that there. Okay, so moving on. Let's, uh, let's look at the syllabus again, all right? So looking at your screen again, 
you have your syllabus, right? So let's look at one module right here. So let's pick module five as an example, right? So you see module five right here. So this is module five. This is what the module is. It's about positioning. It's a marketing concept. And of course, these are the course contents, right? So these, uh, you could call this a checklist for what to cover in the module, all right? So all you have to do is simply, again, copy, right? So just right click, copy, go to your study guide again, right? And you can see here in my study guide, there you go, that's module five. And when you paste, just paste it right here. It's the core contents. Now once the schedule is done, right, you can, uh, Set, let's say, July 29, 2020, 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m. for the live class schedule. Now, what, was, uh, what were the assessment tasks for Module 5? Okay. So what you can do is, if you already have a set assessment task, I'm going to go back to the syllabus again. Right? If you've noticed here, the assessment task here is we're going to have a lecture discussion. We're going to have a case study. So let's use the case study. Right? So what you can do is you just simply take the case study right here, copy, right, and paste here on the study guide. Okay. This is the case study. So it's important to have a deadline. Now, since uh, you're going to be, it depends on when you're going to give them this assignment. So let's say August 3, 2020. All right, and that's it. Now, it's uh, very important if, uh, it's very important to create the study guide in uniform to the course syllabus, right? So let's say, for example, when are our major exams? So you'll notice here that there is a prelim examination after module four, right? So what you can put in your study guide is the same. So let's go to module four. This is module four. There's a prelim exam right here, right? Scheduled to be determined. And of course, there's module five again, right? So my study guide is designed in such a way very similar to my course syllabus. Okay, so now we'll look at our modules. Okay, so uh, after you're, you're done with your study guide and you have all your modules in place, right? You have your course contents, you can simply put to be determined for the live class schedule since we don't have a final schedule yet. And once you have your outputs and of course uh, to be determined uh, times for deadline right here. So actually, essentially the most important thing is your course contents. Once you have this done, uh, you can start looking at your modules, which is what we'll discuss next, right? So modules. So let me share my screen again. So this is a sample module I have. So again, this is module five, right? So this is uh, one of the modules I used in the undergrad classes. Uh, it contains the knowledge objectives of the module and the out, uh, very simple outline, right? So this is somewhat of a detailed module, but to get things started, you don't have to make it as detailed as this. You can make uh, your module as simple as providing the course content itself, right? So the modules will help students, especially those who don't have the necessary materials, right? It will help them keep track and learn on their own pace, right? So uh, for some of you, you can, you can also use PowerPoint. You can share them with students and you can write notes on the PowerPoint if you don't have time to complete the module, right? So now I'll show you where you can organize all that. Okay. so. Um, I organize everything in my laptop so that once the LMS training will begin, it will be so easy for you to upload everything that you've done. So I'm going to show that to you right now. 
So this is my online learning folder in my laptop, as you can see right there. And I created another folder with the name of the course. So the course is BME 1201 Marketing Management. So you can get started by doing that, right? And then inside the folder, you can organize it like this. All right. So you'll notice the way I organize it. So I have a general folder, major exams, and of course, one folder for each module. You see, when you're going to upload everything in the LMS, and it's as easy as uploading, right? Once you have everything in your computer, this is the majority of the work. Once you have the LMS, it's as simple as copying, pasting, and uploading the needed materials for you to deliver the course contents. Okay, so again, one folder for general, major exams, modules, and quizzes. Now, I have a separate folder for quizzes because I like to give long quizzes from modules one to three. That way, I don't get confused what module that quiz is about, right? So let's start with the general folder. So the general folder includes the syllabus, okay? a course overview. A course overview is during the first day of meeting, uh, you can give them a, an orientation and you can create a different file for that. Basically tell them what the class is about and so on. I also have my rubrics here. And of course, the study guide that I've showed you is also here. So this is where I keep all the general files, all right? So it's good to have them in this folder so that when you upload them later on in the LMS, it's much faster, all right? So next is major exams. So it's the same. I have my final exam here, midterm and prelim exam here in the major exam folder. And of course, modules. The important part here is the modules. Let's take one module. Say again, let's go with module five. What's inside each module? So at the first part of this uh, of this presentation, I showed you some instructional materials, which were also mentioned by Professor Montano during his part in the orientation. So let's go inside module five. Well, you see here, right? Module five contains the module that I showed you earlier, right? So it contains the knowledge objectives, everything, every content student needs for the course. And of course, there's a PowerPoint here. So this is my accompanying PowerPoint for module five. I put it here. Then one of module five, if you can recall from earlier, one of module five's assessment tasks was a case study. And it's right here in the same folder, right? Now, what else? Okay, one of the things that was mentioned was a test bank, right? So I always prepare test banks per module. So I have it right here. All right, so let me show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm going to show you what a test bank looks like here. So a test bank is actually just a Word document which contains your questions for each chapter. So this, these are a few questions that are true or false for Module 5. All right, so it's in Word format so that all you have to do when you're going to, when later on you're going to be taught how to create a quiz in the LMS, all you have to do is simply copy the question and of course, uh, copy the answer in the LMS. Okay, let's go back to the module folder. Okay, so that's it for uh, the case study. That's one of the assessment tools, the module itself, the PowerPoint, the test bank. And of course, I like to put a text document here, a notepad, where I can save all the links that I might uh, consider uh, showing students that is related to the course. Like for example, Right. This is a link, a video link in YouTube, right, for a video that is related to Module 5. So you can save this link and the title of the video in a notepad for easy access. And once you're in the LMS later on, all you, you don't have to download and re-upload the video. All you have to do is copy this link and paste it in the LMS, and the students can view it anytime they want as long as they have internet connection. Okay, so last part of this guide is uh, I'll show you what it looks like in an LMS. So I'm gonna show you uh, everything that I've just shown you and then how does it look like in an LMS format, all 
right? So I'll share with you one LMS sample. Please take note that this is just a sample LMS, right? So this is what it looks like. This is CPU's uh, LMS, right? So you have your general here, right? So very similar to the general folder I showed you. So it has the study guide, it has the syllabus, right? There's also the orientation folder, uh, orientation part. You can also you can skip that if you have your general. It depends it depends on you and how you structure it. And the important part here is actually the modules. So let's go to our favorite module again. That's module five, right? So if you can remember when I showed you the syllabus and the study guide, the prelim exam right after is module five. So module five comes after the prelim exam. So it's right here, right? So module five is right here. This is the video. This is the video that I showed you earlier. And I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was copy and paste the link in the LMS. And when the students click this, video appears right here. Right? So, and then you have your case study, right, for module five. So I mentioned one of the, uh, one of the assessments was a case study. So it's right here. So what's in here? So it's the file that I showed you earlier, right? So uh, all you have to do is just upload it together with its instructions, then you are ready to go, all right? So no matter what LMS you use, all of the learning materials that I've showed you, all the instructional materials I've showed you, right, can be uploaded and can be uh, placed in that LMS. So the most important thing to take away from this uh, presentation is to prepare your material. So let me show you that again, all right? So to end, for those of you who don't have a proper way to organize your materials, this is how you can, one way you can do it. So general folder here, major exams, modules, inside the modules are your lesson plans or your detailed module, your PowerPoint presentation, your assessment task, your test bank, and of course, if you have any videos or art or articles, there are links. So that's it for my part in this presentation. And uh, I hope that I, I have helped you uh, get ready. Right? So uh, beforehand on the training, help you uh, get ready to prepare your instructional material so that once training is set in place, you'll be ready to upload everything, prepare, edit everything. So don't worry about perfecting uh, everything. Right? So. Um, you can take time to prepare your online instructional materials and don't worry once you've uploaded everything it's actually quite easy to edit if you want to make any changes to the modules to the tests and so on so no matter what elements it's actually quite easy to make revisions all right so uh, that's it for my presentation thank you very much thank you very much uh, professor razon for that uh, lecture on preparation of online instructional materials. So I hope you were able to get the list of the things that we need to prepare for the online instruction. Okay, again, if you have questions, you can just post it on the comment section below our YouTube video. Now, let's go to the next lecture, which will be talking about an overview of delivery and handling of online classes. He is a faculty from the College of Nursing, who had also been trained by Shameyo Enotech using a MOOC. Let's welcome Professor Alvin John Gustilo. Good morning, everyone. I am Professor Alvin John Gustilo, and I'm here to present to you the topic delivery and handling of online classes. The objectives of my discussion are as follows. Number one, to differentiate face-to-face -face classroom management and online classroom management. And number two, to discuss strategies in online classroom management. In order to manage our online classroom, we must be aware first of the current situation that we are facing. On the screen, you can see the worldwide effect on schools by COVID-19 by the UNESCO. The colors represent the areas where the face-to-face -face classrooms close 
due to the said diseases. The purple represents the countrywide closure of the schools and the magenta represents the localized schools that closed. As you can see, over a short period of time, there is a wildfire effect, meaning that there was a rapid spread of closure of schools who utilizes the face-to-face -face type or mode of delivery, and that includes us. Hence, a shift to a new normal is coined in the delivery of classes worldwide. So what is now the difference between face-to-face -face and online classroom? There are three major points that we will consider. First, the physical presence. Second, the connectivity. And third, the technical capability. In face-to-face -face physical presence, is needed for both the students and the teachers. On the other hand, in online classes, it may not be. Connectivity refers to the internet access and connection. In face-to-face -face classroom, it is not needed. However, in our online classroom, it is highly needed. Technical capability refers to the capacity of both the students and the teachers in the use of computer hardware and software. And this may be needed to both face-to-face -face and online classroom. Still, in any type or mode of class delivery, the teacher is needed to facilitate the learning process. At this point, I am sure that most of you, if not all, are experts in delivery and handling of face-to-face -face classroom. However, many are anxious in doing online classes. So here are some of the strategies that you may use in handling or managing your online class. Such as, number one, contents of your course should be uploaded in the learning management system which is the Scology. So, as what Professor Razon discussed earlier, you need to upload your materials online in the learning management system. This is a form of an asynchronous management in which you can set beforehand your materials regardless of student engagement. You can upload your files that you needed in the learning management system from start to finish. Some learning management system has features that may include activity completion and timed assessment. That is one way to manage the access of the students in the files that you have uploaded. Next is the orientation of students. In order that the students can access the files without the teacher, a proper orientation should be given to them as well. Students should be given orientation on how to access the learning management system or any other platforms to be used. Students should also be given instruction in terms of the files or resources to be downloaded, as well as the assessment that they need to enter or take to finish their course. Lastly, general online classroom rules and regulation. Creating an online classroom rules and regulation helps to organize your online classes. As a teacher, you can facilitate a smooth flow of exchange of ideas and discussions. Aside from that, it can also help your learning management system by not overwhelming the system, which means that the activities are still below the limit of the system's capacity. Let me end my discussion with this picture with embedded words. Let's work together. For I believe that in order to solve the puzzle, every one of us has a piece to share. So for your questions, you may ask in the comment section below. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Gustilo, for giving us an overview on the delivery and handling of online classes. So again, if you have questions, we are down to the last lecture.
which will be a recapitulation. So if you have questions, please post on the comment section below this YouTube video. So I hope you're getting excited for our online classes. So let's have a recap. Good day, fellow faculty. We have heard a bunch of lectures from our colleagues, and right now I'll be performing a recap. So we've heard of the term online learning, and we've also talked about what is an online learning. As it has been emphasized, it is a mode of learning delivery where resources are accessed through the internet. So this is a type of learning using our internet. What can we do? We, we, we can pray. We can still orient our students inside our online learning classroom. We will be discussing. We can give quizzes. We can give requirements. We can perform assessments, such as your case studies and reporting, and of course, grades. All of this are still possible in our online learning platforms. Let's hear some comments. I know, as mentioned by previous lecturers, you are anxious in this new initiative. Let's hear some words here. Some may say, we cannot replace classroom learning. It is the only effective way of doing it. Others might say, this is about time to retire. Internet is just for the millennials. While others will say, we cannot replace teachers. We need classroom-based education. But right now, we're facing online education. To answer some of these concerns that might sound familiar to you, Remember that our goal is not to replicate the classroom setting. Our goal here is to deliver education to remedy available to us. Second, the use of technology is considered to be a skill, and a skill can be developed through continuous training. And third, technology must be seen as a means to an end. The technology is only as good as the user, and still the teacher is considered as the key. What is our strategy? Some of you might be wondering, why are we having this orientation right now? Our main goal is to be equipped with KSA, your knowledge, skills, and attitude, suitable for online learning. Do we expect you to be experts after this orientation? No. Do we expect you to be able to manipulate the schoology that we have been talking about earlier? No. Please take note that this is just an orientation. And we will have an actual training for that. What is our long-term goal? Our goal is to ensure continuity of learning in times of crisis. And this COVID-19 pandemic is an example of this crisis. Let's have some questions, answers that you might have heard of. Or some statements there. One statement that you might be familiar of is saying, I am afraid that I will go wrong. Here are the answers. You are not alone. And the next part is, we are a learner here and have a beginner's mindset. We as faculty have been so accustomed to become experts or as experts in our respective classrooms. But this is about time for us to consider ourselves as learners. Next statement, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to click. I don't know, all the I don't knows that you might say. Ask for help. Start with something simple. We don't expect you to deliver a perfect online lecture the first time we'll be doing it. So we will be starting from something simple. And we will be developing that as we go along. Also, actively participate in the training. This is not about time to be like our students who just nod and say, yes, yes, we understand, even do if we don't. So during the training, if you have questions, be engaged to your lecturers or to your trainers. Ask questions. Next, is online learning the best mode of delivery? The quick answer is no one-size-fits-all remedy. So we could not say that it is the best mode of delivery. So as nobody could say that classroom-based learning is the best mode of delivery. But we are trying to make the best out of this. And second, we should assess and evaluate early and often. During your online classes, we expect you to connect with your students. When we say assess and evaluate, we know that this is a new experience for both of us. So we need to ask our students, how was your learning experience? We need to look at the evaluation parameters, if our students are improving or not. And from there, we can improve. 
Many are asking, is there a theoretical basis for online learning? There are a lot. There's actually many. One that you might have heard of is the Community of Inquiry Model, which was formulated by Garrison et al. I will not be boring you on the details of this model, but it emphasizes on three important factors. First is social presence. For online learning to be effective, you need to ensure that there is social presence or the feel that you belong in a certain community. And in that case, the classmates of your student. Second, there should be cognitive presence. In cognitive presence, you expect your students to develop critical thinking. Not because we are using our internet, we'll just be allowing them to read. Instead, we engage them to develop critical thinking. And then the last one is your teaching presence, which is about designing and developing the course. All these together combined to give the learning experience of our students. So take note, social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. How do we deliver it? You have heard the previous lecturer talk about your learning management system. In CPU, we are doing this inside the classroom. Here in online learning, we'll be doing it through your learning management system. That's the long meaning of learning management system. It's an online platform. Allows delivery of your materials, resources, tools, and activities to students. Tailored instruction that can be accessed by students anytime, anywhere, without geographic constraints. Or in simple terms, that will be your online classroom through your learning management system. After this orientation, you're expected to prepare these documents. Do we expect these documents to be perfect? No. Do we expect these documents to be improved during your training? Yes, that will be our goal. But we want to have these documents so that we will have a startup for your training. So first, your syllabus, preferably the subjects that you will be teaching this summer, along with the study guide, and then the contents of the module, which would include your PowerPoint presentations, your pre-test and post-test assessments, which can be in the form of case study, reporting, term paper, or any other requirement deemed appropriate by your colleges and its respective rubrics. And then you will have your test banks in the form of your quizzes and examinations. If you, are, if you already know how to perform lecture videos or you make lecture videos, you may also have that one. And the key takeaway for this orientation is these two lines. This is a start of something new, and we are all in this together. Thank you very much. Now we are done with the series of lectures for this orientation. Now we are open for question and answer. So I hope that you got uh, a gist of what will be happening for our online learning. So I'm capturing some questions from our YouTube live feed. We have a team here that will be answering your questions, along with our president, Dr. Chodoro Sirubles, our vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Irving Rio, our HR director, Professor Palomar, and the lecturers for this uh, event. Now, our first question is, ano ang LMS? So our LMS, or Learning Management System, will be the way for us to administer our online classes. You might be asking if what is the LMS that will be used by CPU. As of this time, okay, sir. As of this time, uh, we are inclined to use Canvas. As of this time, we are inclined to use Canvas. Okay, for the tertiary education. For the basic education, they will be using a different learning management systems. Another question. Sir, good morning. Our concern is the speed of our internet. How can we handle our online class if our internet is slow? Can I have an answer from our lecturers? If the problem is the, you know, the internet connection, uh, we have some tools like uh, messengers. We can use that for uh, be, uh, for the basic communication you know, between the instructors and the student. Uh, maybe not the old, uh, 
not all of the time uh, we have a poor connection no but uh, we can uh, we can uh, uh, use some uh, no, some uh, tools that uh, available in the you know in our uh, cell phones so that is the you know the the um, simple way no uh, to you know, to communicate to our student Okay, so we can use other remedies, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, we can explore uh, what possibilities are there if there is a provider that can provide uh, a much faster service. So during the uh, live training year, by that time, we will able to have some answers already. Sir, there is a follow-up question. Is it possible for us to go to CPU to access the internet? Uh, yes, we will be preparing uh, several stations so that even everybody can come and use our uh, computers and our system uh, so that they will have a much better connection. Okay. Thank you, sir. Do you have other inputs? Okay, good so, morning. Good morning. So thank you for that question. Actually, um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. Sige, sir, muna. Uh, in addition to uh, what is being asked or with regards to the connectivity, probably uh, one way also is uh, using our asynchronous management wherein uh, if the students have an available connection, they can download already the materials that they will be using in their entire course. Thank okay. you. Sir Ton. See ya. Thank you, sirs. Uh, good morning. Uh, in relation to the internet connectivity, no, uh, it's actually a, a requirement for our faculty to have a stable internet connection. But we could not deny uh, it would actually depend where uh, uh, where uh, could possibly be our instructor located. Let's say, for example, if you are living in, in, in some municipality where, where uh, internet connection is uh, actually not fast you know, as here in the city, then as a faculty, we could possibly swap or switch into a, an asynchronous type of learning. Let's say, for example, we, we, we have two types of learning, the synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous actually is, is, uh, requires uh, a very stable internet connection. However, the asynchronous mode could possibly be with no internet connection or a combination of both, with, with internet connection or without internet connection. Now, uh, for those faculty who, are, who have difficulty you know, in addressing small internet connection, now, uh, we have several technologies and tools you know, to use, uh, just like what have mentioned by Sir Peter Campanero, we could make use of the messenger, the only tool and the only platform in the Philippines right now that they offer free data. Then, if we could make use of that messenger you know, tool, uh, the importance of our content uh, materials actually would uh, play a very important role. Uh, rule you know, in, in asynchronous mode. Our student would probably download you know, the course materials and the faculty who is handling you know, a course, an online course, you know, would possibly be also download its own course material and do the lecture via messenger. Then that's actually very important to have a, a PowerPoint presentation so that during the asynchronous delivery of your online class, we could have at least guide to guide also our learners in case our internet connectivity is uh, uh, very difficult actually to achieve on the fast you know, pacing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, let me clarify the terms that were used because some of you are new to that, those terms. Synchronous and asynchronous. Asynchronous means that at any time, you can download whatever materials are there for your course. Now, synchronous is a time, uh, there is a scheduled time for you uh, faculty to be dealing with students. 
So they will know exactly what time it will be. It will be according to the schedule of your classes, and that's synchronous. So I just want to make that clear that uh, asynchronous, you can download anytime. You can download everything uh, if you want, uh, whatever is on the uh, uh, course material provided for that course. So if there are questions about synchronous and asynchronous, then uh, it is better for you to ask that question to be clarified. Because sometimes we use terms that many of us are not familiar with. Thank you, sir. Our next question is, is there financial support for internet connection for the faculty? Um, I think we can definitely give you an answer during the live training here at CPU because we will be exploring what are the possibilities. Um, but initially, we would prefer that you come to CPU so that when there are problems in, uh, with the LMS or with anything, uh, you can get your answers right away. And then later on, uh, when you're now more familiar with the system, then you can be anywhere with your internet connection. And by that time, we will have uh, information on how we can uh, deal with that kind of problem. Thank you, sir. Another question will be, sir, I am a probationary faculty. Is it possible for me to avail of the computer loan provided by the university? If you will be teaching this summer and you will have a load for the next semesters, of course, you can do that uh, because we want to make sure that uh, you are uh, still hired by the university for the next months that you will have to pay your computer loan. Thank you, sir. Another question. Is it possible for the materials to be used in this orientation to be provided? So that will be provided to you. The video of this orientation will be made available also. Okay, we'll be providing it through your respective deans. Okay. Next question. What if a student uses data only? Will it be okay for an online class? So I think this has already been addressed. We have synchronous and asynchronous sessions. So mobile data could be could possibly cater our students for online classes. Another question, are the faculty expected to finish all instructional materials before the training on June 1? Uh, I think what is important is the faculty knows what to do so that if they don't finish it in June, hopefully it will be finished uh, by the summer session because it will have to be completed by that time. So it is better for them to finish it for the month of June rather than wait until they have started uh, classes because they may not have enough time to do that. Besides, there's nothing else to do in the month of June other than the training, so the faculty can concentrate on preparing the materials. And the advantage there is all the work has been done, so it will be a lot lighter for you when classes start. Thank you, sir. A faculty asked, will CPU give us Google Drive that we can upload our materials? So I don't know if all of you are familiar of Google Drive. Google Drive is actually a cloud-based platform where you can upload and uh, share your materials and heavy materials. Or in simple terms, that is a way for you to send your emails even if it contains a lot of videos or a lot of PDF files. So we have the Director of the Office of Communications here. He advised that if you have the cpu.edu.ph email address, you can actually have an unlimited Google Drive. Okay, so you need to have your cpu.edu.ph email address. Okay, we have another question. Is the study guide presented the format to be followed? That I think this is addressed to Professor Razon and to other members of the team also. Is the study guide to be presented or presented the format to be followed? Sir, 
Rio. Uh, again, there is no one size that fits all policy. Different academic disciplines have different approaches. Okay. However, they have to conform to the minimum requirements. Okay. But they are not expected to follow in total the model presented by Professor Rason. But if they want, they may do so. Okay, other question. Uh, Sir Robles has mentioned that the salary for the month of June will be given for faculty who will complete the training. Does this include the part-timers? If they are going to teach in the summer, then we'll have to figure out a way how they can be uh, given the funding for this. So we need to look into that. But we want to make sure that everyone who are going to teach in the summer first are uh, trained, and then after that, all the rest of the faculty. So we will figure out a way how we can provide a grant for this fac faculty development uh, program. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think this is a follow-up of the internet access. There is a question that if uh, CPU will provide internet stations for faculty, what about students who have no internet access? Is it possible for them to have access to these internet stations? So, although there is the possibility, uh, the university is still exploring if the CHED would allow students to visit our university face-to-face, uh, -face, okay? Because that would entail them to travel. So that is a part that is yet to be answered because uh, we need coordination and guidance from the government issue one says pertinent to that. Now, um, uh, there is a question from the medical field. Good morning. How about us on the medical courses? We are having related learning experiences or hospital exposure. How do we go about with this? Uh, we don't have the answer for that yet. We are waiting for directive from CHED. But hopefully before the start of the first semester, we will have answer to those. But it is important that since most of the courses require uh, training for online education, then we have to adapt that kind of system. So we need to train everybody. And I know there are questions about laboratories. Uh, we cannot answer in general. I think uh, the faculty needs to discuss with this with the dean, how they can deal with this kind of issues if we are still uh, required only with online during the first semester or during the summer. So I, we don't have the answer to that because it depends on uh, the laboratory. Yes, sir. Uh, if I may add, the guidelines on a blended uh, program, combination of face-to-face -face and online, uh, is not yet clear. However, schools may offer summer classes before September if they can offer it online. So in this case, we have no choice but to offer it online. If the course has a laboratory component, by all means, we need to also offer that online. So we need to think outside the box, think on how we can offer certain courses online, because that is the basic requirement prescribed by the government. Okay, sir, thank you very much. So we are awaiting for the issuances of CHED also on that matter. Now there is a question, is it possible to conduct small group discussions or workshop online? So that can be done through the aid of our learning management system or aid of other communication platforms. So you have Zoom or WebEx. That will be tackled during the technical training. There is also a question, um, is there an application 
for examinations and quizzes, wherein in the end of the quiz, the student will be able to know the answer. Ah, the student will be able to know the scores for the, quest, for the quizzes. Sirs? Uh, yes, so for most LMS that, we've, uh, that I've tried, you can actually, you know, there's actually a feature for quizzes, any types of questions, true or false, identifications, essays, workshops, as you mentioned. Um, so most LMS have that feature. And yes, you can, students can see the score. And the teacher, there's also a feature where the teacher can provide a general feedback. Like for example, if, a stu if you give a student an essay question, right? And you, after that, you give them the score. You can also write a feedback on why his or her score is like that. So that is included in the LMS. So there is, uh, there could be a, a quiz and then there will be a score and yes. a rationale to yes. the questions. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. This is a question from the College of Medicine. Sir, since we are still in our midterm, can we have the training for our current classes to be continued? Again, since we are still in our midterm, can we have this training for our current classes to be continued from the College of Medicine? I think that's a good question that we haven't really have a complete answer yet. Uh, I was planning to meet with the Dean of the College of Medicine and also the College of Law because they also have not finished uh, to look into uh, the solution to that problem. Um, that would require Palestine's uh, they can join the first batch of training. Um, there's a question, sir, on the technical training. Is it possible that the technical training will be conducted by college? I think that is our plan, sir, now. Yeah. So the plan is that the technical training will be done by batches, wherein one college will belong in a certain batch, so that we will have a common language. There will, be a, there will be groupings also practicing uh, physical distancing as recommended by our government. There's a question, how can the faculty access the LMS of CPU? You will be given guidance on this once the LMS is already finalized and once uh, accounts are already created for the faculty. Uh, what are other questions that we have? I'm scrolling down through your questions. Uh, laboratory classes, we were able to answer that. Uh, Sir, Sir Rubles answered that we are still awaiting for guidance. There is a question, Sir. How many hours of synchronous or web conferencing are we required to? As of now, as to online classes, we have no clear-cut guidelines from the Commission on Higher Education. So let us not deviate so much from the usual way we do things. Okay, we still follow the schedules formulated by the schedule coordinator. Now if your schedule, say, is from 9 to 11, then hold class during, the, uh, during that time. And your students should also log in during uh, that prescribed time. Yes, sir. It should be understood that uh, in order to avoid chaos, uh, we follow the schedule uh, when we deal with the students, uh, when we deliver online, uh, based on the schedule prepared by the schedule coordinator. Uh, it is important that we should stick with that and not make changes uh, because that will make it more difficult to manage. Okay, thank you very much, sir. So the message is we will follow the schedule of our classes as announced. Uh, there's a question. Is it possible for us, or can a faculty use the classroom by his or herself when delivering or creating video presentations to be uploaded online? Uh, it's probably not possible yet because we are still 
in the process of uh, acquiring equipment and rewiring so that every classroom, hopefully by the first semester, will be available for the faculty to be using that classroom alone and connect with the students. But right now, uh, we don't have that capability yet because we're still working on it. Uh, there's another question, sir. How do we know the batch and the date of our training? Uh, um, good morning. It will be uh, communi communicated to the deans and uh, uh, department heads. So we already have uh, the schedule. We'll just uh, inform you of uh, the, the dates. So it will be communicated by, uh, through the HR. Uh, there's a question, sir, about the grading system. Will the same grading system be followed or will there be changes on the grading system? Uh, I think we need to look closely at the grading system because it varies with the type of subject. So I think this is something that needed to be discussed. But let's learn the system first. And then we can all uh, make decision on the grading system by classifying different categories of classes. Because we cannot say that it will be the same for all types of classes. Uh, Professor Porke, may I add something? Yes, sir. Uh, this is a totally new terrain. We are still familiar, familiarizing ourselves. So it's very difficult to debate so much from the usual ways. So this coming summer, uh, I do believe uh, it's more practical if we stick to your usual grading system. The only difference is that you're doing this online. As we go along the way, we improve our uh, online delivery. We learn lessons. But again, this is a new territory. So let us not deviate so much, OK? Especially if we are planning to offer summer classes. And that is just a few weeks ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's a question related to examinations. How can we be assured of the validity of our examination given? Will there be a possibility that some students will request others to answer the examination sent to them? So before I pass the microphone to some of our uh, experts, there are methodologies available in the learning management system for us to assure the validity of the questionnaire. We can throw multiple choice questions, we can throw essay questions, true or false questions, the same as the questions that we are doing in our examination. Is there a possibility that others might answer for the students? The possibility is there, but there are controls available to us. We can have timed questions. When I say timed question, let's say I will post the question from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Okay, And after 9 a.m., it will lock. That will allow the student to focus on the question and not to search for the answers. There are also other technologies that the team is yet to explore. So we have online proctoring, although that is a, a little bit more advanced. We are also exploring the possibility of locking the browser. When I say locking the browser, when they are opening the examination, they could not open other websites in the browser. These are some technologies that are yet to be explored. But one remedy that we can have is to emphasize on the core values of Central Philippine University. Our dictum in online education is if the student would want to do something, okay, such as cheating, they can do it with the technology. However, we need to emphasize to them the core values that we imbibe here in CPU. Okay, are there additional inputs from the team? Uh, actually, in online examinations or assessments, 
there is always questions about the validity and authenticity of your examination, it, 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 especially if you are uh, doing this examination or assessment synchronously. No. But in synchronous mode, uh, students actually could not request his or her classmate no, to, to uh, uh, respond on your examination or assessments for in, in behalf of your examination. No. Uh, second, delivery of online examination actually would be uh, based on your test banks. No. Test banking actually is very important in, 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 in uh, organizing your test and assessments. Let's say, for example, if you have 50 items, uh, examinations to be delivered online synchronously, then uh, it is highly recommended actually to have your test banks in 100 items so that your examination could be randomized you know, at 50 items. And at the same time, if that examination is in multiple choice uh, uh, style, then you could actually uh, random, still randomize those options you know, so that students, you know, even if they are on the same place you know, on your uh, online class, they could still not uh, accommodate each other you know, by doing or responding their uh, sets of examinations. So that, that's, that is actually uh, the importance of test banking. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, there's an input from Sir Gustilo. Uh, in addition to what uh, the panel has also uh, discussed, you can all, there are also LMS that you can set the number of attempts in which the student can take so that it can help also reduce the chance of cheating with our students. Uh, thank you very much, sir. We have a question which is intended for the graduate studies. We have a Dean Libuan here. Doc, the question is, is there any plans for the comprehensive examination and online classes? The graduate school is actively participating in the plans to hold online classes. And this coming summer, we are offering uh, different courses through online and we are also looking into conducting the comprehensive examination through online we will do the uh, announcement uh, later on after we have sorted these things out but definitely to all graduate students out there please uh, enroll for summer. We will be waiting for you. We will prepare ourselves to teach very well online. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, sir, there's a question for the schedule. Will the classes start still at 7 a.m.? Uh, they might be worried of the internet connection. Or uh, I'm not familiar with what it is, but if there is 7 o'clock, then we will have 7 o'clock because we cannot cramp everything in the same hour. Uh, um, we have so many classes and uh, we cannot hold classes uh, um, one after the other without breaks for the students. So there will be seven o'clock classes also. Thank you very much, sir. There's a concern raised. We did not complete, uh, we did not get the complete answers because of the technic uh, technical glitches. So again, this video will be made available later on. You can uh, view this later on to review some of the questions and answers also. Um, there's another question. What will happen, sir, to the academic staff as the online classes begin this summer? Um, for those who will not be teaching this summer, there will be requirements for you in order to receive um, an equivalent to your salary for the month of July. So it depends on what uh, level it is. So there will be something. Uh, we, will, we have this started to discuss this already with the principals and the deans. So we will be looking at this uh, list to see what these requirements are. Of course, the first requirement is for them to be ready for 
the first semester. That means they have to be trained uh, with the system that we're going to use. And there are other requirements that we need to do in order to satisfy accreditation uh, requirements. So those who will not be teaching in the summer will have um, some uh, financial aid in the form of uh, their salary, maybe equivalent to their salary for 18 units, but there are uh, requirements. If I may add, uh, for our librarians uh, and guidance counselors, uh, they will uh, start to regularly report uh, uh, this uh, June, no, and they will receive uh, their regular uh, salary. Uh, secretaries of uh, academic units like uh, College of Education, no, uh, they've uh, already uh, started uh, reporting uh, since uh, May 20. Um, Dr. Libuon, there's a question about uh, the defense of the students. So for the graduate school, ma'am, is there any plan for the pre-oral or final defense in graduate studies? Excited na sila mag-graduate. Yes. <laughs> Definitely, we are with you. Uh, we are looking into that as soon as our uh, infrastructures become available, that we can have a very good uh, uh, connections, uh, then we will consider both the pre-oral and the final defense. But again, this is subject again to the availability of uh, good infrastructure, which the university is currently working on. But meanwhile, I would like also to bring, since there would be five panelists and one uh, person presenting, we can do also a face-to-face -face, uh, with the proviso that there would be physical distancing in the room. So both ways, we can do that face-to-face -face, uh, with just five panelists and one presenter, and we can do online, especially those who are living from far away places. We're looking at both without violating any protocols, without violating any rules and regulations. Thank you. Okay, uh, there's a question if we can, this material can be viewed again. So yes, you can view this material later on. Um, are there other questions coming? Sir, can you post the requirements intended for the faculty for the training? So while I am uh, reviewing some of the questions, let us see. Uh, sir, for summer teaching load, when can we have our teaching assignments for us to prepare for the instructional materials? Or do we still need to wait for the number of enrollees? First, faculty who are scheduled to teach this summer must first acquire the needed online skills. So first they have to acquire the needed skills, and then uh, the deans will start assigning them uh, subjects before the start of summer classes. However, in this case, we simply assume that all faculty have already built up their teaching materials. So during the training, it's a matter of organizing the teaching materials, including your attendance assessment, so that it can be uploaded to the system. So we require faculty to upload one course this before the start of the first semester to see to it that they have really acquired the needed skills so that they can deliver the course online. Thank you very much, sir. So for the question if when the summer load will be available, 
they can coordinate with their respective deans. deans. So summer classes is scheduled to start on July 1. July 1. Uh, please see your dean uh, a week or 10 days before the scheduled opening of classes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There's a question from the College of Medicine. I'm not so sure if we can answer this right now. But the question is, currently in College of Medicine, we just send our lecture slides and notes to our students. How can the lecturers be possibly compensated, if possible? Uh, we need to discuss this issue with the dean. With the so we, we cannot answer that right now. OK, so College of Medicine, it's uh, still pending the meeting with the uh, dean. Do we have other questions? Uh, what is the proposed class size for online classes? Will be maintained, sir. Uh, for the pure online, uh, we have uh, right now for the summer, uh, we peg it at 30, but uh, we have not made a decision yet uh, for the first semester. What? How will we deal with that? Because we don't know yet whether it's going to be online fully online or blended. So as we get closer to that, we will have the answer. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in addition, uh, faculty who are scheduled to teach this uh, summer will be the first to be trained, OK? And the subject that they're going to teach are the, one, are the subjects that they're going to upload to the system. Oh so that they will have ample preparations. So they cannot say that we were not trained by the university. So they will upload courses that they are going to teach this summer. Thank you, sir. Now I could not uh, see a new questions on the feed. So if, I have, if you have questions that I was not able to address, you can comment it again. Okay, while we are uh, giving you an a recap on the things that you're supposed to prepare for the training. So our training is scheduled supposedly, uh, our training is scheduled as per the memorandum release to start on June 1. The batches will be announced through your respective deans and department heads. So what do you need to prepare prior to the training? So the things are posted, or the things that you can see right now. So you need to prepare your course syllabus. I know you already have it. Your study guide. You also have your modules and your lesson plans. That would include your PowerPoint presentation, your assessments, which can be in form of activities. It could be case studies. It could be term papers. And then test banks, pre-test and post-test. And then lecture videos, which is optional. You are not obliged to have this, but if you have this, it's good. Also videos, articles, and other relevant web links. So if you have articles that you want to use for the term paper of your students, it is wise for you to copy the link to that article so that it will facilitate our training later on. Okay, so these are the things that you need to prepare. Uh, I have, yes, sir. Uh, I think you should also access the internet to see if there are resources that are available online so that you can include that in your study guide so that it will help the student uh, looking for information that will help them in understanding the materials that you will be discussing. Thank you, sir. So I hope uh, everybody is clarified with these requirements. So this will facilitate our training. Some of you might be asking, is there a need for me to bring a laptop during the training? Okay, if you have your laptops, you can bring your laptops. That will be wise so that we can have your training on your respective laptops. However, our training will also be conducted on the respective computer laboratories, which means there will be computer available there in case you don't have your laptop yet. Oh, sir, there's a question. Do we have online enrollment mechanisms already? Currently, we are working on the online enrollment platform, and uh, we will be doing a, a uh, uh, dry run, possibly by... by uh, first week of June, no, and we also uh, behaving our uh, online payment system, and it is currently under development, no, and the first uh, mm, 
system that has been published already is your uh, is student accounts. No. Uh, Mr. Cabrera will be uh, our in charge for the student admission, including the, the student uh, assignments, uh, subject assignments. No. Then uh, the first process would possibly be on the pre-enlistment. That would be our entry point for the online enrollment. And that would be scheduled, uh, our dry run, as I've said, would be scheduled on, June, uh, on, on the first week of June uh, uh, 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. There's a question online. Since multiple choice test is with time limit, what would happen to those students with Wi-Fi connection failure? Um, so multiple choice questions does not really follow that you will have a time limit that is up to the strategy of the faculty. And because online education is new to us, flexibility is advised. Okay, flexibility and maximum tolerance and understanding to the respective situation of our students is recommended. This is even an issue once from the chat that we need to exercise maximum flexibility to our students. That's why we have synchronous and asynchronous sessions. Okay, we will go into detail of that through, uh, during the technical training. There's a concern, sir. What will be the effect of online class to the members of the rank and file of the university? Uh, this is something new, and we don't have clear-cut uh, solution yet, but we are continually discussing what we should do. So we don't have the answer for now, uh, but uh, right now the staff are reporting to work because this is a no work, no pay situation. Thank you very much, sir. Do we have any other questions? Uh, sir, there's a question addressed to you. Uh, by June 1, sir, can we have our teaching assignments? What is the minimum number of course preparation for summer and later on the first semester? Uh, for summer only, uh, only those again who are scheduled this coming summer will be trained first. So kindly refer to the schedule from the Human Resource and Development Office. So again, to equip them with the needed skills, there are, they are going to upload the actual courses that they are going to teach this coming summer. And before the opening of the first semester, they are also required to upload the courses that they are going to teach this coming first semester. So they will be informed ahead of time. Yes, sir. Um, since most of our lower level class, uh, most of those classes that are multi-sections are in the lower levels, uh, one and first and second, uh, for the third uh, and fourth years, there are a lot of classes that are one section only. So we cannot avoid having multiple preparation for some faculty. However, since most of them have been teaching for a long time, they should already have accumulated course materials. Otherwise, it's just like having a new one every year. So it's just a matter of encoding what they have into a form that would be uh, applicable on online uh, delivery. So whether you teach two subjects or three, it doesn't really matter because you already have those materials with you. Unless, of course, that you approach it differently every year and you don't prepare for it. It's just like in elementary school, for example, and junior high school, they have lesson plans. So they have already uh, um, completed all their work. It's just a matter of putting it in a form that they can upload. So you let the students know what's going to happen for the rest of the, for the whole term instead of telling them what to do for next week or for the following week. So this will make it a lot easier for everyone after the first 
semester of teaching has been done. The rest will be easier. Thank you very much, sir. Sir Razon. Uh, this is in concern to the earlier question about multiple choice, uh, time limit, and connection failure. Um, there, you don't have to worry about that, no? So my recommendation is uh, per module, just prepare your test banks at, as what Professor Montano said. Like, for example, if you can prepare 100 questions, right, and then the student takes an exam, um, once the student gets disconnected, you can actually, uh, you have to you know, give them another attempt, but the LMS allows you to randomize the questions. Uh, randomize, for example, multiple choice, 1 to 50, it will shuffle the questions, and it will also shuffle the choices. Now, so that's one feature that uh, the LMS will provide. But again, as uh, what our moderator said, that will be covered in technical, technical training. training. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sir Razon. Uh, now there's a question, uh, when can we release the announcement for enrollment? Do we, uh, is the schedule, sir, for enrollment the same with the previous memorandum released, uh, stands as is? Uh, I think the latest one that was released should be what we are trying to, um, to do, unless, of course, uh, there are some minor changes. But let's consider that what has been released is what our schedule is. Thank you. Let me check our online platform. I know most of you are excited to ask questions. Okay. We are happy for the participation. So this is actually one way for you to deliver an online class. Okay. At least you are exploring some of the possibilities. Okay. For those faculty who are worried of the resources, you can search the internet. Don't be afraid. The usual advice that we give to friends is that do not be afraid to click or do not be afraid to press a button in your computer that will not explode. Okay? Do not be afraid. Again, I would like to emphasize that. Do not be afraid to click. It will not explode. As long as you will read what you are clicking, you are safe. Okay? You always have the option of yes, no, accept, or deny. Okay? As long as you read. Also, you are advised to utilize open educational resources. When you are doing your search in the internet, you can write the topic in your subject matter topic, and then you add OER or open educational resources. Open educational resources are resources available to the faculty that can be used as long as proper citations are being done. Okay, there are interactive activities there, especially in the discipline of business. Okay, in other disciplines also, you, there are interactive uh, activities done by other faculty in other institutions. Okay, you can make use of that as long as proper citation is being done. They are referred to as open educational resources because you can make use of it. Okay, I am checking again on the live chat if there are other questions. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I know that uh, for many, uh, this is something new. So that there probably would be a lot of questions uh, other than what was already uh, mentioned. So what we will do is we will have to organize a team with their telephone numbers or email so that you can communicate with those people directly instead of sending it all to me or to Dr. Rio, uh, because there will be questions on the technical side, then questions on content and so on. So we're hoping that we will have the team ready uh, to answer questions uh, that are not uh, covered uh, in this uh, session today. But I'm sure during the regular training, there will be a lot of questions, but there will be more people that will be helping out the lecturer uh, because we know that some of us are uh, uh, not familiar with the computer. Uh, our children can do better than us, and they are not around. So there will be some that will assist uh, those that need uh, assistance. Uh, about shuttle service, <laughs> we, the university cannot guarantee that there will be shuttle service because we are all scattered in different places 
in the city and province. Uh, so we will look into that problem and come up with a solution, but don't expect that there will be a shuttle service for all, because that's not possible. Uh, unless you stay in uh, one or two subdivisions, uh, we can do that. But if you are as far as Lambunao, for example, and uh, Duenas or Banati, then that will not be uh, possible. <laughs> Thank you for that, sir. Um, there's an, uh, sir, there's a suggestion. Uh, is it possible that we can conduct a forum like this for students? It will be very helpful uh, for them and to their parents as well. If we can make good in the forum, perhaps it will convince our students and their parents, especially to enroll in CPU. I think that's a great idea that uh, we can do that. Uh, maybe set a schedule uh, because it, it, the, the, the best that we can provide would be information that we can give them as soon as possible so that their decision making will be affected by what they have learned. So we will do that. We will schedule the forum. Thank you for the suggestion, sir. Uh, in addition, we don't expect faculty members to be expert in online by simply attending one training. <laughs> I am very sure after the training, many still uh, needs to be further clarified. That's why uh, we are recommending to the president the creation of a SIP University online response team to cater to uh, questions from faculty so that we can really equip them to teach online before the opening of this summer, before the opening of the first semester. So as part of uh, our trust, we are going to appoint one or two uh, key faculty to respond to online concerns from their colleagues. And Sir, may I announce that the chair of the CPU online response team is that very active uh, graduate school dean, Dr. Ruena Libuon. <laughs> so if you have questions after the training, please don't hesitate to text her number. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. We expect that there will be a lot of problems in the beginning, so it is suggested that for the faculty, it would be easy, better if they come to CPU, uh, we will prepare the facilities so that you can do the delivery uh, of distance learning here at CPU in the beginning until you become more familiar with uh, the system. Uh, do you have any closing address, sir? Uh, I think uh, we are, uh, because we are in uh, uncertain times, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, whether we come back to the classroom next, uh, next semester or next year, or according to Duterte, when the vaccine is available, which could be f maybe a year, two years, four years, f or five years from now. So we want to make sure that we are ready for any eventuality so that we want to keep ourselves, our families alive. And uh, so I hope that everybody cooperates because this is for you, it's not for me. If I just look at myself, I don't really care. Uh, I can live without it, but I'm, we are more concerned of the welfare of our faculty and stuff. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. We hope that uh, there is no apprehension anymore. Think positive, uh, not positive with COVID, but <laughs> positive, positively so that with your open hearts, open minds, we can absorb anything faster than our children. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the team for the orientation. And of course, thank you very much for all the faculty and staff who has participated to this program. 
We hope that you are all excited for the incoming training as we gear towards exemplary Christian education for life. Thank you once again and see you.